How's it going guys, Andy here and welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about this amazing philodendron silver queen, something that I've had on my wish list for quite some time. And when I saw this one in the garden center in Essex that I visited today, I just couldn't resist it. It actually fills a perfect spot that has been a bit of a trouble spot for me in my home for quite some time. It's a corner area, it's quite shaded, and I've had an aspidistra in the corner there for a while and I've not really been happy with it. I was looking for something a bit taller, but compact in its shape and something that will tolerate the lower light levels because it doesn't get a huge amount of light there. And this one I think might fit the bill perfectly. And in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the species of philodendron. I'll give you a care guide if you've just bought one of these. I'll give you some information on its care and then we'll repot it and we'll see what it looks like in its new home. Alrighty then, Philodendron Silver Queen. It is a tropical houseplant from the Southern American parts of the world. And so it's gonna naturally reside in the lower levels of the tropical rainforest. So you would normally find it scrabbling its way through, climbing up onto other plants, other trees, and um, having lots of humidity in its natural environment, which is why this is a low light level plant. It would be in the lower levels where no direct sunlight actually gets through at all because all the taller trees will have blocked out, the canopy will have blocked out all the direct sun. So it's low light levels and high humidity. So that's why I'm hoping this is gonna be the perfect plant for me. What I love about this plant is it has these beautiful arrow-like leaves that uh, have like a bluey, greeny, silver hue to them, almost metallic if you catch it right in the light. And I think they're just stunning. The color of the leaves is beautiful. And as this plant grows bigger, those leaves get bigger and more arrow-shaped as it matures as well. So a real statement piece and a stunning looking house plant. As you can see, it's a climbing plant. They have these very thick stems that grip onto anything. And as you can see here, this isn't actually tied onto this moss pole. It is actually put out these um, root-like uh, grippers that very firmly grip onto anything it can so it can pull itself up and climb up, which is fantastic. And the new leaves come out from the top here. And this is quite a fast growing and hungry plant. So if you're looking to put it somewhere, just be aware that it's gonna keep growing higher and higher. So you want to have it in an area where it has a reasonable amount of height to grow into. You can buy replacement moss poles that are taller. So uh, if it needs more support as it grows, uh, you can replace the pole to give it more area for it to grow and grip onto. As for care, when it comes to uh, the philodendron silver queen, it will need some very specific care. So I would put this at like a medium skill house plant. If you're a beginner, this might be a tricky one for you to look after, mainly because of the watering. Okay, it likes to stay moist. So not wet, but not dry. It won't tolerate drying out. You're gonna see drying of the leaves, browning of the leaf tips, and it may crisp up and start to curl up if it gets too dry. So you're gonna to need to check this plant on a regular basis and check the moistness in the soil. So it's not something that you can forget about for a week and come back to, because if it dries out, it's gonna start looking bad and it may even die. When I say regularly moist, it's not wet, which means you can't sit in moisture. You can't cut corners by having a big tray of water underneath and leaving it, because if it sits and gets soggy for too long, the roots are gonna rot and it's still gonna die. Okay, so moist, but not wet, which means you need to water it regularly, potentially, three times a week in the growing season, maybe even more often if it's a warm environment where it is. The key is to keep checking it and seeing where, where the moisture levels are. If it's still nice and wet and moist on the surface, you haven't got to worry. Once the surface of the pot starts to dry, then you need to water it again. Little and often with this one will be the way to go. 
So light requirements, we've already talked about, this is a low light level plant, it will not tolerate direct sun onto the leaves. It wouldn't be able to survive here in my back porch because the sun comes around here all day long, lots of direct sun onto the leaves. It's gonna scorch it. It's not going to tolerate that much sun, unfortunately. So if you've got a sunny room, keep it away from the windows. Make sure the sun doesn't touch the leaves. If you've got a darker room, it's gonna appreciate it a lot more there. If you have a shady spot like mine, I think it's gonna be perfect for that area. As to how much shade it will tolerate, well, time will tell because my spot does get some light bouncing off the walls and things, but it does not get a lot of light where it is. So I'm fingers crossed it's going to be happy enough in the darker corner that I've got for it. But I've heard from some research on the internet that it is quite happy in the lower light level areas. And if you think about its natural environment, there will be some times where um, the plant is sat covered by other plants um, growing close to it. So it may well uh, be adapted to some particularly low levels. So fingers crossed when it comes to that side of things. Now humidity, obviously it's a tropical plant from a tropical environment. It's gonna appreciate higher levels of, of humidity. So if you live in a colder area that has, for example, heating like here, you can't keep a, a plant like this close to a heat source like a radiator like this because the radiators will dry out the plant very quickly. You'll get um, brown leaf tips and the plant will dry out itself. So you keep it away from any heat sources if you live in a cold country. And if you have a dryish environment, do what you can to keep the humidity up. So you can spray your plant with a mister with just some um, rainwater or some demineralized water ideally or even tap water at a pinch if, uh, if that's all you've got. Spray the, the top of the soil and then that will evaporate slowly and keep the humidity levels up. You can use a humidity tray, I've talked about this in the past, that is simply like a, an old container or any side type of container with gravel in it like this and then you can water this gravel and keep the water level below the gravel. So when the plant sits on this, you're not watering the plant with this, simply keeping the water under the gravel. And as that water slowly evaporates, it's gonna create a slightly raised humidity level, maybe one or 2% higher around the plant. And as that slowly dries out and slowly evaporates, you're gonna have slightly higher humidity levels. All you have to do is top up this two or three times a week and you've got a little bit more of a, a humid environment for your plant. It's a handy tip. Alternatively, the best possible option is a humidifier, a machine you can plug in close to your plant that on a regular timer will emit some humid, moist air around the plants. And so lastly, we're gonna talk about feeding. And this is a relatively fast growing plant, which means it's gonna be quite hungry. And so feeding regularly in the growing season, spring, summer, autumn, it's gonna appreciate a regular feed. Used coffee grounds are perfect because um, they have acid and nitrogen in them. So you can sprinkle used coffee grounds on the surface and every time you water a little bit of that is gonna seep into the soil, giving it a, a low regular uh, dose of fertilizer every time you water. So that's a great free option. Alrighty, I think that pretty much wraps it up for the care guide, but hang around because I'm gonna put this into its new pot and then put it into the corner of my living space into its new home.